Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Welcome to worship on this seventh Sunday of Easter. I am so glad that everyone is gathered in this digital space to hear the word of God, to pray, to sing. Uh, a special welcome to anyone who is new to the Grace community today. We are so glad that you are gathered here. 
And of course, all are welcome to our 9 a.m. in-person sanctuary worship. Each Sunday, please wear a mask. Please take a moment, if you have not yet done so already, to light a candle in your worship space, to type the, your prayer requests in the Facebook feed, and to respond to the question of the day, which is, what is the most spiritually fortifying part of church life for you? Perhaps it is something related to worship or a way that you serve here at Grace, Maybe it is Bible study or prayer retreat. Maybe it is the relationships that you formed in the Grace community. Please take a moment to type into the Facebook feed what is the most spiritually fortifying part of church life for you. And those will be um, shared during the sermon time later in the service. But first we sing this joyful Easter tide. <laughs> of the risen Christ, who is the life beyond all death and the joy beyond all sorrow, be with you all. And also with you. We sing together the hymn of praise. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship
Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your Spirit, transform us and your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sing together Psalm 1. sing together the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus prayed Praise here for the disciples, so his words are directed to God. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. This is the gospel of our Lord. 
praise to you, O Christ. Always having been a Lutheran kid, my mental picture of nuns is shaped by movies. By nuns, I mean, yes, Roman Catholic women who enter into a convent, live in community, and devote themselves to God. I imagine, and if you were sitting in front of me, I would have you raise your hand, do you also imagine, Whoopi Goldberg in Sister Act, using music to reach out to the convent's neighborhood and the world. I imagine Susan Sarandon in Dead Man Walking, running an after-school program for kids in her, in her New Orleans neighborhood and visiting a man on death row, a story based on a true story of the ministry of Sister Helen Prejean. I imagine Julie Andrews in The Sound of Music, sent as governess to live with and care for the Von Trapp family. In real life, I have never personally met a nun, though I've certainly heard many stories from friends who grew up Roman Catholic. What's interesting to me is the dual narrative of nuns' lives. One narrative is women living in isolation, though in community, praying for hours a day, married to God, and largely restricted from any interaction with the outside world even through technology. The other narrative is about strong, radical women using the freedom and energies of single life to pour themselves into works of justice and acts of deep love for humanity. Though, like I said, I am not an authority on the realities of committing oneself to a convent, the dual narrative of nuns' lives reveals the confusion that I think many of us Christians feel about our relationship to the world. In today's gospel reading, Jesus prays for his disciples on the night before his death, and he prays about this question, how the disciples are to interact with the world, especially after Jesus' death, because he knows it's coming. By the time John's gospel was written, Christian persecution was in full swing. Lion's dens, crucifixion, stoning. In this terrifying context, how are Jesus' followers meant to understand and engage with the world? Jesus asks God to protect the disciples, and he acknowledges that the world hates the disciples. But in verse 15, Jesus says, I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. A couple of verses later, Jesus declares, As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. The world, in the Gospel of John, is a place God loves. Remember that John is the Gospel where we hear, For God so loved the world. John 3.16 in John, the world, the cosmos, though certainly a mixed bag of sin and righteousness, light and darkness, is not an entity to ignore or avoid or think ourselves better than. Jesus sends the disciples into the world even though that world literally, historically, hated the disciples. Jesus sends the disciples into the world to share the life they know in Jesus that others may abide in him, that all people may come to love one another. Jesus prays that God would protect his disciples as they enter the world into which Jesus sends them, so we can only assume that Jesus sends us, later Jesus' followers, into the world God so loves too. Of course, Christians' relationship with the world was one of those hot topics in theology back in the day, around the mid-20th century. We know we're not of the world. Perhaps we are in the world and meant to escape unscathed. Some of the theological reflection produced in seminaries and universities has led Christians of many traditions to try and remain unstained by the world 
to read only Christian books, to listen only to Christian music, to refrain from profanity, which I'm not saying I'm encouraging, just to be clear. We assume when we speak of the world that it is with disdain. The world and its values oppose us and our values is how the story goes. There is a clear line drawn between Christians and non-Christians, between those who are of the world and those who are simply in it. I think this distinction is a grave misunderstanding of our sacred scripture. For one, we are, as Christians are not somehow more pure than other people. I mean, I wish we were, <laughs> but we're not. Just last week, someone commented to me here at church, it's a good thing you weren't here earlier, Pastor. I had some choice words about this situation. The person who said this to me was apologetic, implying he was not acting as a Christian should. But the situation was genuinely frustrating, fraught with practical difficulty. We are Jesus' followers, yes, and we are also just people living in a complex, imperfect world. Even more importantly, the Gospel of John reveals a God who so loves the world that God shows up in the flesh, in Jesus. God does not remain unstained by the world. God comes here to get mixed up in all that the world is. God enters the world not to condemn it, but to save it, love it, feed it, heal it. To save, love, feed, and heal us. Jesus sends us into the world, I think, like nuns into a lifetime of service to God. We live in community because Jesus' following can be hard, and we rely on each other for strength and encouragement. Our question of the day is, what is the most spiritually fortifying part of church life for you? It could be something related to worship, a way that you serve here at Grace, perhaps Bible study or prayer retreat, maybe relationships that you have forged here at church. I invite you to put your reflection in the Facebook feed. And I'll share what has been shared already, if my internet connection will allow me to do so. Not as of yet. All right. At the nine o'clock service, people shared uh, that for them, the most spiritually fortifying part of church life um, was Bible study, hearing the word of God, sharing in Holy Communion. Uh, counsel was the most spiritually fortifying part of church life for one person. I was so delighted to hear. Bible study, Sheila says. Um, worship. Um, worship, and uh, Andrea writes that the connection through worship and music with all the saints in my life, past and present, who model being Christ's hands and feet in the world. Ursula writes, knowing that I am away from everything except the love of God and time to worship him. Shirley says, quieting my mind. Jim and Kathy Spittler say, feeling the spirit as I sit during the service, contemplating everything. We are nourished by times of contemplation and worship by our connection with the saints through music, through um, Holy Communion, where we are at the table together, through service and relationships. But once we are strengthened and encouraged, we go back out into the world to follow Jesus wherever he leads us, to works of justice and acts of deep love for humanity, 
We, do, we go out not to condemn the world, but to love it as God does, or as best we can approximate. The world God so loves is the world where we live. We, alongside Jesus, pray that through us and guided by the Spirit of God, all the world may know the love of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. We offer our prayers to God, who in Christ makes all things new. You have made us one, O God. Give us clarity of purpose, ears to hear one another, and hearts open to your community. As we make difficult decisions as a congregation, help us turn towards you and your mission instead of our agendas. Hear us, O God, and make all things new. You have made us one, O God. Give us vision to see our interdependence with your whole creation, how we need a healthy earth just as all creatures need a healthy earth. Give us wisdom in caring for this planet. Hear us, O God, and make all things new. You have made us one, O God. Give us eyes to see all people as your children as our sisters and brothers in Christ, and thus as beloved. Allow this knowledge to so permeate us that we treat each person gently and advocate boldly for those caught in systems of injustice. Hear us, O God, and make all things new. You have made us one, O God. We pray for people around the world who struggle this day, particularly in India and Somalia, in Israel and Palestine, for comfort and safety, for wisdom for leaders of nations. We pray for members of our community who are in need of healing, especially Clark, John, Aberdeen, Joey, Lutea, Steph, and Lee. Hear us, O oh God, and make all things new. For what else do God's people pray? We pray for Warren, who was just diagnosed with lung cancer. God, we pray that he would know your presence with him in this difficult time. We pray also for doctors who provide treatment, that they would be filled with wisdom from you. Also, that the treatment would be effective, that Warren would know your comfort and your peace that passes understanding. We pray that you would strengthen him for the process of treatment and bring healing to his body. Hear us, O oh God, and make all things new. We lift up Fernando and B. God, for all that you know that they need, we pray that they would know your presence with them in any difficulty, and that you would guide Lori and all those who love Fernando and B to do what is most helpful and supportive in this time. Hear us, O oh God and make all things new. We lift up uh, the family of Joy Cox, who unexpectedly passed away this week. Um, we also pray, uh, we pray particularly for Jean and David and for her four siblings and numerous nieces and nephews as they grieve the loss of Joy. We give you thanks for Joy's life for the blessing she was um, to her family, to Andrea, to all those who knew her. God, we pray that in all the difficult days that are ahead, that you would constantly walk with them and provide people to walk alongside them. Hear us, O oh God, and make all things new. God, you know all that this broken world needs. We ask that you provide for each 
and every need. Hear us, O God, and make all things new. We praise you with our whole lives and raise our prayers to you, confident you will work through the Holy Spirit and the risen Christ to make all things new. Amen. I know that at this point we're supposed to share the peace of Christ, but I realize that I forgot to invite you to share words of wisdom and encouragement with our graduating seniors. Uh, This year we celebrate with Gabe Saldivar and Alec Cotter, who are graduating from high school. And so I invite you to take a moment, whether you're watching live or if you are watching the recording later today or this week, and type into the Facebook feed words of encouragement or advice, wisdom for these two young men as they embark into this phase of life beyond high school, which as we know, if we are beyond um, high school ourselves, that that can be kind of a scary time, feeling like you're you're walking off the side of a cliff. And so please um, just type into the Facebook feed um, words that you you think will um, strengthen and encourage them in this time. And we did um, share wisdom with them during our 9 o'clock service and pray for them, but um, please pray with me uh, for them now. We thank you, God, for the gifts you have given Alec and Gabe. You have blessed them so that they might bless the world. Encourage them through their achievements to serve you and your people, knowing that you are always with them. As they enter into a new phase of life, watch over and lead them on this new adventure. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you you is what I heard. Please share the the sign of Christ's peace with one another. If you are with someone in the flesh, please share that through a hug or a handshake, or share the piece digitally, perhaps through a text message, or maybe messaging through the Facebook feed. We are grateful for your continued financial support of Grace Ministry. Let us pray. Gracious God, our ordinary gifts seem small for the celebration of the risen Christ, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Nourish us for service in your name, that we may rise to do your work with our hands. Amen. O God, when our hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope. When impossibilities close every door and window, grant imagination and resistance. When distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination. Open us to all you do, that we might partake in your marvelous work. Amen. We are so grateful for everyone's presence online today. If you are new to the Grace community, um, please shoot me an email so that I can get you on the list to receive the bulletin on a weekly basis. My email is pastor, P-A-S-T-O-R, Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, at graceinthecity.com. Our quarterly community building goal is for everyone to participate in either in-person sanctuary worship or walk up Holy Communion at least once per month so we can renew our in-person connections with each other. St. Andrew Lutheran Church is, excuse me, offering in-person vacation Bible school June 6th through 11th. If there is a kiddo in your life who would like to have some fun and learn about Jesus, this would be a good resource for them. There is information in your bulletin. We will begin our heat respite program on Monday, June 7th. The heat respite program will run Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. We are not um, offering an indoor heat respite program this year. It will be completely in the courtyard with shade and 
coolers and misters, we will need some volunteers, not as many as we normally do. Um, but if you would like to volunteer with the heat respite program, if you have an hour, we would love to have you on board with the heat respite team. We have um, hired two people to share this full-time position, Adrian Kay, who currently also works in the church office, as well as Phyllis Kocher Schilling. You can reach out to both of them at the email address outreach at graceinthecity.com if you'd like to volunteer, or of course you can reach out to me or Solveig. Are there other announcements? All right. Please stand wherever you are to receive the blessing. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. May God look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. We sing together, Christ is risen, alleluia.
are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.